Hi, welcome to the Frank Prince Show. I'm your host, Frank Prince. A little recap from last week's show. Thank you for Patrick Milligan for coming out, from the, who owns the Stan Comedy Club. A little shout out to the band Haunted Radio. They were on the Tommy Marr Show the, uh, Monday night. They will be appearing at Good Friends in Mastic Beach, 625 Mastic Road, and Shirley, tonight at 9 o'clock. Hope to see everyone there. Today I have with me um, former director of emergency management for the town of Islip, Mr. Richard Gimble, and also from Association of Contingency Planning, the president, um, Andy Weitzberg. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. I figure we need to plan an effect with all this stuff with <laughs> going on, these hurricanes and storms, and people don't really prepare. We need to know how to prepare better. We don't want to wait for the last minute. Agreed. But before I start with questions, I'd like to ask both of you, you know, your backgrounds, and I'll start with Richard. Okay. I'm a uh, retired New York City firefighter for 21 years. Uh, I've been in emergency services for 44 years and uh, emergency management for the last uh, seven years for the town of Islip. Uh, I now own my own company called Coastal Recovery Consultants and I consult those people who are looking to uh, receive FEMA funds, uh, learn about preparedness, contingency plans for businesses and um, items like that to make us aware and be prepared. Okay, Andy? Uh, let's see. Um, my original background comes out of the insurance industry, but I spent the last over 30 years in technology. And I guess after 9-11, I realized that all the voice and data communications in Long Island went through Manhattan. So I started to understand that we had a real problem and uh, started to get involved with contingency planning, discovered contingency planning and uh, became very interested. 
and in 19, in 2009, um, I became the founding president of the Long Island chapter of the Association of Contingency, Contingency Planners, uh, which is part of a national association with 43 chapters, over 2,500 members around the country. Um, I had been a member of the New York City chapter for a few years, and I said, hold it, Long Island has different considerations than New York City because we both live and work out here for a lot of us. So it's been interesting. And in the last uh, two years, uh, I've moved to specialize in HIPAA compliance, which is a subset uh, because most of the compliance people come from a compliance area, don't come from a contingency area. And that requires a risk analysis, a continuity plan, and security practices and procedures, which fall very much into an area that I understand. So it's been interesting. And running the chapter has been a lot of fun, exciting, get to meet a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten some great speakers. And from September to June, uh, the second, second Friday of the month, we have meetings at the, uh, the Delphi University over in Hopog. So it's been interesting. And the, those meetings open to anybody? Or? Well, yeah, we, we encourage people to come. Um, it, it's, it's, it's more for the business community. Okay. Um, that's where we concentrate. Um, but we have small companies, medium-sized companies, people, we have large companies. We have many of the largest companies on Long Island who have members that attend. I also have the pleasure of having some of the contingency planners from New York City uh, companies and the New York City chapter who live on Long Island, so they come to ours as well to see what's going on out here, which is slightly different <coughs> from what they may be dealing with in the city. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it gets to be an inter interesting perspective of seeing uh, suburban and urban differences in plans and, and conversations and mindsets. But it's great that people coming together. Oh, and, absolutely. You know, we get to share experience. What, that's why I oh, put this show together, because people need to come together, yeah. because we don't know what's ahead of us. There's a lot of help out there. People just look for it. Correct. That's why. And, and, and that's what we're that's after. That's why I brought you guys here. And that's what, yep, that's what and we're I'm about. And about helping others, too. Yep. It doesn't that's matter. But look, look, after Sandy, I got a call from one of the not-for-profits because they were, having, they were getting inundated with a lot of material coming in, and they weren't used to handling all those shipments coming in at once. And I was able to track down a logistics specialist for them who came in and helped them get organized so that they put, put a system in place because they would track the trailer loads coming in one right after the other. And they just, it was out of their normal experience. But for the business community, they have that experience. They've dealt with this before, maybe not on an emergency, but on a day-to-day -day basis. They know what to do. They have the systems. They organized them, and things went a lot smooth, more smoothly after that. And that's what we're happy to do. We had many friends who, who were flooded. We tried to get them whatever resources we could help them. And uh, hopefully everybody who was flooded has a FEMA number um, and has put in a claim. I believe you only have until uh, July, Rick. Yeah, just, uh, uh, two third, yeah, just month. Coming up. Yeah, July. to July to put in your claim. Claims. As long as you've... You've made your claim. You may not settle it by the end by by July, but at least you've got to get the process started. Get your claims in. Get absolutely get your claims Don't in. Don't waste time because we think and we think and the time goes by. Just get your claims in. It's onerous. It's it's it gets you crazy. The paperwork will get you crazy, but at least get started and. You will. It will continue. Right. You'll get there eventually. And even with the paperwork, we're here to help you. Right. You know, we're here to help you do the right thing, to get it done for you, if we need to. Um, get the right claims, the right wording, because it's, you're dealing with the government, and have, everything has to be crossed and eyes and all that stuff. So, cross uh, your T's, dot your I's, dot your I's, and, um, and yeah. it'll go. It will go. But you have to realize it doesn't take a month. It could take o almost a year to get some claims done. And that's what hurts a lot of people. That's the way our government works. You know? yeah. I, 
That's the other thing that we saw in Sandy. Um, and, and Irene. And Irene. And a lot of people didn't realize. They thought, oh, I'll make a claim and I'll get money. Yeah. It's now almost uh, nine months later. And some of the claims have been partially paid. Very few of the claims have been fully paid. Some of them have ongoing questions going on. And hopefully they'll get be able to get payments and get the work done before the next storm comes. And there will be another storm, whether it's this year, whether it's next year. Um, just because we had um, a, a the hundred year storm doesn't mean you're only gonna get the storm once in a hundred years. Just means that that's the big storm of the year. Right. And what's the process to put in a claim? How does that work? Well, we I'm have not to register. A yeah, so all right. A homeowner, a you would register with, um, you would hear from the, the, the municipalities, uh, the towns, the, the counties, the state. You'll hear it on the radio. Uh, it'll be broadcast everywhere that uh, go to this facility to uh, claim to FEMA. Uh, FEMA is the one you want to get to. And all the towns and the villages and the state have ample places you could go to to make a claim. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to get the claim, but at least you have a number and you can file for it. That's the big thing. Then the next thing was to do is uh, file for an SBA loan, small business loan. Uh, you don't have to have it, but it might help you um, maybe uh, if the insurance takes so long to get, that maybe this loan might come quicker and you could get your house fixed quicker. Um, that's another avenue you could go. There's also an ICC off your insurance that you claim um, to uh, like raise your house to give you up to thirty thousand dollars to help raise your house. But you got to put the paperwork in and the engineering drawings, and it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, I'm working on a house right now that it's taken uh, just about six months, and we're ready almost uh, to put the first I beam in to raise the house. So it, it takes a while. Um, it's paperwork, but you know what? Don't get discouraged. There's people out there that can help you. Just ask them. You know, nice. ask your towns, ask your villages. There's people there to help you. And it's, some of this stuff has to go through those uh, avenues, the villages, the towns, the county, to get into the state to, for FEMA. So you have to follow that program with the towns and, and the local communities uh, to get the paperwork through. You just can't file it and give it to FEMA. It doesn't go that way. It goes through the formality of the villages, the towns, in the county. In contingency planning, what what areas do you cover? Bas besides storms and anything, you know. it could be it, it could a contingency plan. Perfect, is, perfect example. What was it not too long ago? The big fire. Yeah, and well, there was a fire that that actually closed down almost a whole town. Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared your business that could that could operate someplace else? Meanwhile, because you can't get into your business now, because it's just happened to be a, a major catastrophe in that area of a fire. It doesn't have to be a storm. It could be a terrorist attack. It could be a local domestic uh, issue. Uh, the, An overturned truck? Overturned truck, closed the expressway for four hours. How do you get your shipment here? Do you have an alternative routes or, or ideas of how to get the stuff here? There is so much. It's just not just storms. It's everything. Look at the flooding we had in the past couple of days. Uh, some streets were flooded, you couldn't even drive through. If that was flooding in your area and, and your business was operating and you couldn't get to that business to work, do you know an alternative route? Some people don't even know alternative routes. And They're so used to going that one way, now they know how to get to the place. And, and my concern is the small mom and pop stores. They don't really, you know, they don't really plan for these type of things. And we're trying to reach out to the mom and pop stores because they're vital to us. They're local, right. they're we can walk to them every after. And sometimes they're out of business because they got flooded. The biggest susceptibility that most small businesses have is the loss of power or the loss of their communications, the telephone. Mm -hmm. Why? Because on Long Island, more than 80% of that is aerial. It's in, the, it's in the air. It's on poles. And um, wind, as I used to put it, wind trees and automobiles, all the things that take down poles. And with that, if you lose your power, can you lose your power for an hour or two? Mm -hmm. What happens to a local deli or a restaurant if you lose power? Do you have a plan? Can, can you get somebody there to empty your refrigeration units 
into a refrigerated truck and have a place to store it until your power is restored. Because otherwise, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of merchandise is lost. And the other thing is, you know, people need to understand and talk to their insurance brokers. Because, well, if the power went out down the block, but nothing physically affected, wasn't physically affected by your building having direct damage, you may not be covered. Mm. Look at the effect on Sandy when people didn't have gas for their cars to get to work. Because the gas stations yeah. didn't have backup power. You know, I tried to put legislation years ago to have any new gas station that's being renovated or built should have backup power. You know, and don't rely on our electrical system. And we know a storm is coming. Our government should be allowing a lot of fuel to come in. And the problem with Sandy was the, it wasn't just the, the trucks weren't coming for fuel. The, uh, the depot that gave the fuel lost power. And now they couldn't pump the gas through the lines to get to the local stations and, or the local hubs where they, where they pick up the gas and bring it to the local station. So that was a big concern, you know. And then you saw the people on lines with gas cans for the generators, you know. Again, be prepared. You know, you know it's coming, get a couple cans of gasoline and, and have them ready so you don't lose power on your generator. Frank, here's a quick one. One of our members told a story before Irene, his, his neighborhood pizzeria. He was talking to the guy, a small pizzeria <laughs> shop, and the guy said, well, I can't really afford to do a lot. And he, because the guy, he, had, he was a patron all the time, he said, look, you don't spend a lot of money, but get yourself a generator. This was before Irene. Well, sure enough, when Irene occurred, all the power in the area was knocked out. This guy had this little generator that he was able to run and run one of his pizza ovens. Well, in four days, three, four days, he did more business than he normally do does in a week's time and gained a reputation and new customers because he could serve his pizza. You know, contingency is saying, okay, what if? Having a plan. That's what it's all about. Anything that can interrupt your business, you want to see what you can do to plan to, to work around. So that's, uh, that's what, we're th what we right. try and do. It's part of risk management. You know, what's your risks if this happens? You know, look at that first. Look at your risks first. That really helps you put the plan together. Or starts to put, that's the foundation of your plan. What's your risks? What could happen? And then you've, you work off those risks. And before you know it, you have a contingency plan working. It's that simple. We, we also suggest to people, let somebody, get somebody to help you mm -hmm. come up with the risks because mm -hmm. you're blind to your own, your own right. problems. You need somebody, an outside pair of fresh eyes to look at it and say, okay, this is a possibility, this, this is a possibility, this is a possibility. Then you decide what are the things that you're going to plan to Remediate. What can you remediate? What can you put off to insurance? And what do you what what risks are there that you just have to live with? And there are those. So that's what it's all about. Well, we're gonna go take a break and we'll be right back. Tom Mealy from the Harrison Law Group. You know, soft tissue injury, that's no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. Don't waste valuable time going to firms who don't get it and can't do it. Call 1-800-INJURY-LAW. Huntington Toyota, the experience of a lifetime. Don't take our word for it. The experience for me at Huntington Toyota made me feel very comfortable. It's their professionalism, their honesty, and their integrity. I've bought at least nine or ten cars here at Huntington Toyota. They give me the best price around. It never was about high pressure. It never was about them. It was always about us. Today's cars are very similar, but Huntington Toyota is very different. Huntington Toyota, where it's all about you. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. 
When your cable's on the fritz, you get frustrated. When you get frustrated, your daughter imitates. When your daughter imitates, she gets thrown out of school. When she gets thrown out of school, she meets undesirables. When she meets undesirables, she ties the knot with undesirables. And when she ties the knot with undesirables, you get a grandson with a dog collar. Don't have a grandson with a dog collar. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. We're back, and um, we're going to talk about putting a plan into effect for the viewers. Great. Let's see what we can do for them. For, firstly, a, a free resource for everyone. It's called ready.gov. There's also, on the sba.gov site, there's a ready.gov link for businesses. So on a personal level, ready.gov will give you an idea of how to put together a plan for your home, for your family, what you should do, what you need to plan for. Um, when you're dealing with uh, your business, through the SBA, ready.gov also has a small business uh, plan. And it gives you an outline. It's not going to do it for you. It takes time. It takes effort. But at least it'll give you an outline of some of the things that you have to look at. And another site you go to also is FEMA.gov. When you go to FEMA.gov, there's a whole bunch of th items you could, you could look on. Uh, how to do contingency planning. Uh, how to be prepared. Uh, there's so many different sites you could go to that is, it's readily available for you. Uh, sometimes you could just order a book that's free from them and have it mailed to you, and it gives you all the information you need to go by step by step um, to prepare for your home. Uh, th there is so much information out there on the website that no one just said, I didn't know or how to do this. Uh, there's two good sites, like Andy said, and even, even ready.gov is under FEMA. So you got ready.gov, you got FEMA.gov, you got New York State uh, Office of Emergency Management you could go to. Uh, all these items, Red Cross is another, another one. They no. all have these items that you can go to and look on the internet to see what I need to know and where I can get my information from. And, and, and if you're not a big internet person, just go to your local library. Mm -hmm. Most of the libraries have put together a set of resources for you. Happy to help you. You're there. This is your local library. They want you to, to access this information. They put it there for you. That's all. You know, not everybody is internet savvy. Not everybody right. wants to go on there. So the librarians will be happy to help you out. And they usually have most of this information downloaded already or in book forms that you can look at and with takeaways. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's good. Those are some of the areas. Right. We talk about planning. One of the things that I realized looking at what happened in New Orleans was you should have a contact person outside of your state. So if you're in Tilly someplace that you haven't spoke to in 20 years, say hello, I love you. And you have a local number to call. And not just for storms. Uh, God forbid there was a school shooting. Uh, everybody calls this one number. Uh, trying to get your mom on the phone might, might be very good. So you call this person outside the state, and everybody calls to that person. And that person will, will, will leave the information to whoever calls in. Yep, I talked to Johnny. He's fine. He's doing okay. He's over here. You know. That's very important, that communication on, 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 with family members. You know, make that call before the phones go down. Because once something hits, all these cell phones are pretty tied up with the media. Or, or text. Or text. text Just is let the them other. know that you're okay. And then whoever, everybody calls that one person outside the area. And that will give information back so everybody knows what's going on. That's the best thing that you could do. Now, during a hurricane, okay. it's People have been asking me, and I gave the answer, but I want to verify. Who is in charge? What <laughs> agency is in charge? People say the fire department, this, you know, all these rattling off these agencies. Okay. Is it emergency management? Emergency management. That's what I yep. thought. It starts from the village, goes to the towns. Then if the towns need help, it goes to the county. And when the county sees it, they need help, they go to the state, and the state gets FEMA the Army National Guard, whatever they need. That's, that's the flow it goes to. So if you're a local village, they're OEM. 
if the OEM needs help, they will reach out to the local town. Then the local town OEM will, will reach out to the state, the county, and to the state. And that's how it all flows. And it flows pretty well if you have a good system. How does the uh, ham radio operate? Is ham operates, I tell you, they, I have them in my OEM when I have any kind of storm, a blizzard or a storm. Uh, they never lose communication, they'll tell you that. No, because they are the best. radio tower, there's um, they repeat, talk. it's all over the country. It's all over. That's and you know what? what? I, I rely on them. Mm -hmm. They were in my EOC at the time when I was there. And they would just be there. And, and the county has them also. Suffolk County, I know, and Nassau does too. Uh, they're our backup. If we lose our communications or our tower goes down, our repeater system, we rely on them to now transmit that information to the county, to the state, whatever it may be. They are the best to have as a backup. Yep. It's, it's a public-private partnership. It has to be. Yep. No, neither side can do it by themselves. No nope. That's very important to remember. The other thing to remember is that the public side, the emergency management, the town, the government, is first going to consideration is life and safety. That's first. They're not going to feed you first. They're going to life and safety, keep people out of danger. And that's where the fire departments come in and the police departments come in. Um, CERT, um, that's, a, uh, that's a citizen's emergency response team that comes in to the county that helps out. The volunteers, like the old civil defense we had years ago, it's like that kind of system. They help out. Uh, everybody comes together and works together as a team, one team. If it doesn't, it's going to fall apart. You've got to be a team. And it's been working very well. And how much of a food supply should you have? Well, I think the books you see, three days of uh, water and uh, one gallon of water per person per day. Um, I think Andy said it before. I, I think you should go for at least count on one week of food. And that's dry products. And water. Canned, canned food, water. Again, a gallon of a person a day. Okay? Canned food, dry foods. Okay, uh, stuff you could readily make uh, on a on a on a Bunsen burner or something like that. But the heated meals are great. Okay, they're not your gourmet mom's uh, dinner, but you know what? They're not bad to eat. And we what had them doing a storm. What if they're like ill, like a diabetes or something like that? Uh, what can you can plan for that? You could, yeah. You can plan. You can tell them that. You tell them that you have a special meal diet, and they'll help you out with that. Uh, but the heated meals are self-heated. In other words, you don't need anything else to to heat themselves. You know? the, other th the other thing is, a lot of homeowners have their own gas grills. Yeah. Make sure you have an extra canister of gas. A propane. Yep. A propane. Always helps. If you don't live that, if you live in an apartment and you, or you can't have a, a, a grill, uh, a, camping, a camping stove, they're $30, $40. If you have some canisters. You can warm something up. You can warm up some soup. You can warm up some water. Right. Things like that. That's what I use. Um, my wife said, we don't go camping. I said, yeah, but I can make you a hot cup of tea if we don't have power. She says, okay. <laughs> so simple things like that. Use a little common sense and a radio with batteries. Don't wait till they announce the storm to go buy your batteries. Right. Go, go buy your batteries, keep a supply, have extra. And they also have the batteries, the radios now, do you just crank? And it gives, you, it. It gives you power. They, they're pretty good. They're very good. They don't last long, but do they just crank it again? You know, and some of them have lights, some of them have uh, uh, just a radio itself, or they have lights. So uh, there's, everything's out there for you. You just have to just get prepared, go to these sites, and or call your local OEM office and get the paperwork. One last thing: when the storm is announced and it's coming, don't stock up your refrigerator and freezer. The likeliness is the power's going to go out and the food's going to spoil. Keep the dry food. Keep the things that are easy to prepare. You don't need a lot of milk because it's going to go. All right? Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming on the You're show. Welcome. Thank you for and, having us. Um, I hope you uh, wrote stuff down. And uh, thank you for watching. I will see you the same time next week. Have a great week. And goodbye.
you know the nighttime. 